This is part six to the pegboard toy tutorial for grade six. In our previous video, we had completed making our mallet head uh, with the hole in it uh, so we can insert the handle. Next, we're going to go into an assembly file. We're going to click on assembly down in the bottom. And this gives us our three dimensional environment without any rules. And it is our job to bring in our different parts and then. Uh, create the geometric rules for the parts to follow. So I'm going to click on insert and the first piece I'm going to bring in is my pegboard. I'm going to click on it, come into my workspace environment, and then left click to lay it down. I'm going to exit out with my green check mark. And the first thing I'm going to want to do with this is you can see the part can easily be moved. I want to right click on this and fix the part. What fixing does is it pins that part to uh, our workspace. So this part itself now is unable to move. As you see, I click and drag it. That will allow me to maintain perspective as I bring in the other parts. Next, I'm going to click Insert, and I'm going to bring in the leg. Now, I'm going to bring in one leg. Uh, even though I know I'm going to need a second leg, it's often easier to navigate with only minimal parts in at a time. I could use planar mates and constrain this on the X, Y, and Z axis, but the easiest thing to do is to use a fasten mate, meaning to fix my two parts together at one given point. So I'm going to go to my leg first. And I'm going to look at my leg, and of this cutout here, I want the center middle of that. I'm going to rotate around and find the center middle of my uh, pegboard base, clicking on it. Uh, green check mark to complete it. And what we can see now is these two parts are fastened at that point, meaning joined together, because the green base is pinned. Or fixed to that point, now the uh, purple part or the leg no longer is able to move. They're joined together. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to insert my second leg. Now you can see my leg is backwards, but that's not a big deal because I'm going to set the geometric rules to turn it. So I'm going to again choose that fasten mate. I'm going to choose that same center point of the base. I'm going to come over to my leg and choose that same center point. Now you're going to see the computer follows exactly what I'd like it to do. But it's backwards. So I can come over here to my toolbar and I can orientate that part according to that rule. I can spin it, which I don't need to do, or I can flip it along its primary axis, which is exactly what I'd like to do. And I green check mark this. And I can notice now I have my pegboard toy with the legs fastened to it where they're no longer able to move because they're joined to the original fixed part. The next thing I'm going to do is go up to insert and start bringing in my uh, pegboards or my pegboard pieces. So I'm going to grab my cylinder piece and click and bring that in. Green check mark to close out. Now, a toy wouldn't be fun if it was fastened, meaning the peg was joined into the circle opening, then you wouldn't be able to move it through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a geometric rule for a slider mate. So I'm going to choose the center of the circle. I could easily choose the top or the bottom as well, or the cylinder. And I'm going to maneuver so I can choose the top portion of that hole opening that center green check mark i can close out this slider mate here and what you're going to notice is now my part is able to move through and slide through the hole but isn't able to move uh horizontally in the hole because we fasten it according to that geometric geometric rule in the next video we'll talk about how to insert the triangle